Augur, which is our own machine learning engine that we are using in our solutions. First, I will talk a little bit about the history of uh, machine learning in ESET, because that's, an, as I said, it's a technology that originated in the 50s, and we were experimenting with it for quite a long time now. We started already in the 90s, and the first time it got into our products was 1998. So it's almost 20 years in our products in some form. That's actually the neural networks. But we were also working with it later on in two, after 2000. Uh, in 2005, we started with DNA detections, which was actually online machine learning. Uh, our DNA detections are um, extracting those features from malware, and based on those, uh, evaluating all the incoming inputs, incoming items, and saying, okay, this is something that's similar to the malware that we have seen before, and we are able to detect even the whole families just based on their behavior or their features. In 2006, we realized, okay, we have so much new sample, so many new samples every day that our analysts are just overworked and that's too much for them to work on every day by hand. So we started to use machine learning also to uh, process that mass of information. And our automated expert system was in the beginning maybe a little bit clumsy, but now after all those years and training, it has become a very effective tool that our analysts are using. And in 2012, we also became, we created another uh, algorithm that was placing all the samples that we received on a cybersecurity map. What does that mean? When we see something that's similar to a malware, you might not see that from the features or from like looking it on it under the microscope, but if you put it on the map and you have the overview, then you can see, okay, this is close to some malware that we saw last year, and maybe this is just a new version, so you will look closer at it. So that's also something that we are using machine learning for. We also had different other projects that were using machine learning uh, also for creation of broader DNA detections. URL reputations, and also for finding nearest neighbors of samples. But many of those were actually uh, are still working in our solution. Some of them were, uh, th there are other new systems that we are using for uh, to achieve those goals that are more effective than the machine learning that we tried. So we are trying to innovate in in other regions too, not just in machine learning. Okay, so now we're getting to Augur. There were three main things that were on the way to building our own machine learning engine. Big, three big changes uh, that helped us. The first was that big data became available. So there are solutions and so services that are offering you the power and everything that you need to uh, handle the big data and have the information. So we have the hardware and we have also uh, the software that is able to handle that. Also, machine learning became very popular as as you could as you could see the big IT companies are using it for different various reasons. So there are new different uh, algorithms available, and you can just get them and use them for different purposes, or even try to combine them, which was actually our case. And the third thing that helped us build our own ML engine was a vast database that we built of um, vast database of items that we built and that we correctly labeled between malware, potentially unwanted, and clean files. So when we looked at the algorithms, we found out that some of them are really good for what we are doing in cybersecurity, and some of them had not so great results. So we were trying to find the best approach to handle those, and we found that two methodologies were especially good. First, neural networks, which I already mentioned we were using since 1998, but this time we went for the deep learning and long short term memory, which are actually buzzwords mostly, but those are all ne neural networks. Then there, were, uh, there was a second approach, and that was taking six classification algorithms that we found the most effective and use their output uh, in a consolidated form. Now, these six algorithms could have been uh, set up for um, to have two different setups. First, that was, let's say, more aggressive. Well, in, those, in that case, uh, if one of the algorithms says the sample is malicious, then we will say it's malicious, the whole thing. 
This is better for the enterprise and for big businesses as their admins are mostly working with the uh, samples and working with what was called bad. So they will look at it more closely. Uh, and then we have a second setup which is more conservative. And if one of those six algorithms will say the sample is clean, then we will declare it for clean. That's better for let's say regular users and smaller companies that don't have the human force to evaluate everything. And this is a little bit of the structure how our uh, machine learning is working. This is not the only thing that we have in our solution, but I will get to that in the next slide. On the top, you can see there is a file that you need to uh, somehow evaluate that's some executable. And that is taken apart by the, uh, to, by the emulation and data analysis. So we look at its features, and those features are then fed uh, to the uh, algorithms that I mentioned before. So neural networks and then the multi-model six, class six classification models. At the end, you will get probability values which get consolidate, consolidated <clears throat> and then uh, compared to what we got from different analyses out there. This is actually just the basics. We are not, we are just that's just a peek under the hood. It's much more complicated than just that. But the main point that we need to stress here that machine learning is not the only thing that we have under the hood. So our technology includes many other features, many other um, algorithms and other ways to evaluate the items. Therefore, we are actually looking, also we are looking at various stages uh, of the, when the uh, item is arriving in your system. So machine learning is one thing, but we are also looking in the memory what the things are doing there, what they are, what they want to touch. We are also uh, evaluating stuff via our cloud library. So there is many things that we are focusing on, many behaviors of the malware that we are focusing on. That's why we, that's why we have ransomware shield, for example, uh, or reputation. And so we are trying to know to have the map as accurate as possible and use as many technologies to protect users and businesses as possible. So I will just move to the last slide of my presentation or of my part of this presentation, and those are the takeaways. So the first thing is you need to know and you need to remember machine learning is nothing new. It's not a new, new technology that originated just five years ago. It's, it comes from 1950s. What has changed are the possibilities for companies today. So there is a lot of hardware. There is also big data services that can help you with building the uh, machine learning algorithm. Also, uh, ESET has been experimenting with this kind of technology since 1990s, and we have it implemented since 1998, so almost 20 years. Uh, but even with the latest advances, we know that there are limits to machine learning. Some of them I mentioned before such as uh, importance of updates, importance of false positives. And you also need to remember that the uh, adversary on the other side is intelligent and is trying to avoid the detection. So you need to work hard to keep up with them. And so at the end, the conclusion is that machine learning is no silver bullet. One layer is simply not enough and you need to have more of those, some of those I showed you before on the slide before. So. We are still trying to improve. We are still trying to come up with new technology, the technologies that are protecting our users. 